Yeah. Thank you for a really fine talk. Um, I really appreciated your framing of the um, trade-offs between writing about China as uh, the rising power and writing about human rights abuses. But the way in which I've heard journalists present this problem before has been typically that they would like to write about China as a rising power, or they would like to write about normal human interest stories and so on. But their editors just want to hear about human rights in China. Mm -hmm. And so I wonder if you could say something about You presented it as though it's the journalist himself deciding what he actually wants to write. But that's not the way in which I've heard it presented by journalists in the past. I think I've blown our cover. You know, this has been our greatest defense for years, is that we can always blame the editor. Um, the reality is, is that there is, in the relationship between a reporter and an editor, uh, it's a kind of a duet because the reporter signals what they think the story is and the editor tries to read those signals and figure out where the reporter is right and where the reporter may be following their own issue a little too far in one direction. But if you, if you blunt an editor, if you blunt a reporter from following what it is that makes them excited and what they're passionate about, you're not going to get their, their best work. So I would actually argue that, it, that these days, there is a, in the newsroom, there is an emphasis, the kind of quote unquote same old human rights story. Another person who is locked up and is being um, persecuted for their ideas is in a sense, in the traditional kind of news values way, that's old news, we've read that story. And in, the truth is that there is actually, I think a greater emphasis in the other direction, which is for the gee whiz China story which is that they now smoke more Cuban cigars in one week than we have in the history of the Western Hemisphere. <laughs> or name your story. I mean, in, I've, I've read them, I've written them. And, and that's, that's the challenge, is that in a sense, both matter. And um, the attempt that I've made in, 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 this, in my book and over the course of the last few years has been to try to reconcile these two stories and to say that they are one and the same. And I don't think that you can understand China these days without acknowledging that they are one part of a contradictory problem. And that when we isolate them and we do our, this is my economic story and this is my, my dissident story, we're, we're radically misrepresenting the country. Um, because its greatest vulnerability isn't in fact that they are part of the same whole. <laughs>